Dear students, we will discuss about the choice of solvent in UV visible spectroscopy. As the primary function of the solvent is to dissolve our analyte or sample, and this solvent will be present in the sample holder along with the solute. When the radiations from the source will fall on this sample holder, the sample will absorb the incoming photons and by means of this absorbance we measure the concentration of the element. So the primary function of the solvent is to dissolve sample and if there are some properties associated with the solvent that it should be or it must be transparent in that wavelength range in which the solute is absorbed. Transparent means it must not absorb the wavelengths or radiations coming from the source when they are being used for the determination of the analyte. This is the primary condition because if the solvent will absorb those radiations and solute will also absorb those radiations, we will be unable to draw any conclusive results because we don't know the exact amount. So second property of the solvent that it must not react with either the solute or with the sample holder or sample cell material. Solvent should be cheap. There are certain other properties as well for them they should be non-toxic, non-flammable, non-corrosive, etc. But the main fundamental property is it should be transparent and non -reactive. And there is a term used for choice of a solvent, say, that is called as the cutoff wavelength of a solvent. And cutoff wavelength can be explained like if, say, we have chloroform and the cutoff wavelength for chloroform is 200 and it means that the chloroform will absorb below this wavelength range. For example, you cannot use chloroform as a solvent if you want to measure a solute at, for example, 240 nanometer or say, for example, 220 nanometer or say 200 and 45 nanometer. In that case, chloroform cannot be used. This is the cut. So, where chloroform can be used? Chloroform can be used if you want to analyze a sample, let's say, for example, 280 nanometer. Then chloroform can be used because it is above the cut of the Or you want to use, for example, a wavelength. 300 nanometer of the chloroform. So primarily we need to see the reactivity of the solvent and we need to see the solvent absorption area in the electromagnetic region. Because solvent is also a chemical, it will also have bonds and electrons and they can be excited by photons. So we need to see where that very solvent will absorb and we must avoid those wavelengths. If we want to see a list of solvents that can be used and their cutoff wavelengths, we have a table here. The solvent is listed in this first column and the cutoff wavelength, which again we, we need to emphasize that this is the wavelength below which that solvent cannot be used for the purpose of analysis of an analyte. So acetonitrile, the cutoff wavelength is 190 nanometer. Water has a cutoff wavelength 190 nanometer means that water can be used above 190 nanometer. For example, if it is 
400 or 500 or 300 or 250 or something. Water, if it is a good solvent, it can uh, dissolve that analyte, then and it will not react with that analyte. It can be used. Similarly, hexane has a cutoff wavelength of 195, methanol 205 nanometers. Ethanol can be used above 210 nanometer. Methyl ether can be used above 215 nanometer, and similarly, there are other solvents as well. So, these solvents can be used above these wavelengths, but cannot be used below these wavelengths. So, that's the whole concept of solvents. Solvents can affect the, if they, they can interact with the solute components, they can affect their lambda maxes, they can affect their solvents. So, care should be uh, exercised while choosing a suitable solvent in UV and